Routine combats depression and anxiety. Anyone who has spent time with a stable routine will tell you this. Thomas Saz wrote a book called The Myth of Mental Illness. If Socrates was a gadfly, Zaz was a dragon. Zaz reckoned that by diagnosing unwanted behaviour as mental illness, psychiatrists absolve individuals of responsibility for their actions and instead blame their alleged illness. He warned against the overreach of psychiatry into all aspects of modern life, and he might be right. You see, we live in a non-committal age. Many of us do not want to take responsibility, or at least that's what we think. Don't just take my word for it. Either you or your loved ones are on antidepressants, anti-anxieties, or some pill to help counteract the consequences of their own behaviours. The psychoanalytic concept plus de juillet describes how we can take pleasure in our displeasure. We take shelter in our repetitive anxieties. We'd rather wrap ourselves up in stories that reinforce our identities and give us a pass not to change. These short-term solutions make things easier for a little while but leave us passive, miserable, depressed and possibly even suicidal. You know this. Some of the greatest minds of all time praised their routine as the pillar to their creativity. Leo Tolstoy was a firm believer in routine, writing, quote, I must write each day without fail, not so much for the success of the work, as in order not to get out of my routine. Charles Dickens wrote, quote, I never could have done what I have done without the habits of punctuality, order, and diligence, without the determination to concentrate myself on one subject at a time. When the Great Depression put him out of a job, Joseph Campbell read for nine hours a day, for five years straight. He credits this as one of the most formative periods in his life. Doing the same thing day in and day out, sometimes for months or years or decades, is what gave these greats the space to achieve what they did. You see, when you have one foot in order and the other in chaos, you're much stronger than if you have both feet in chaos, such as a lack of structure that stifles creativity, or order being a rigid structure that stifles creativity. Both extremes prohibit creativity. As Aristotle wrote, we must find the middle way. Now, we must be careful not to fall into black and white thinking. This is where a lot of the hyper-masculine shills make their money. These are the news outlets which promote only to capitalise on our fear and anxiety. You must be the hero, the one that mediates between the two, and the backbone of this whole thing is boring, boring but beautiful routine. After living it for a couple of months and working out the kinks to fit you and your goals, your routine becomes automatic, you become routinized. The forces in your head stay quiet. The underlying sense of order is what gives you the ability to step out into chaos with courage. And don't get me wrong, life will not always be kind, but if you take responsibility for setting up your life in this way, via predictable pillars of stability, I do not doubt that at the very least you will have a higher threshold for dealing with problems that now at this very moment overwhelm you with fear and anxiety. In fact, I promise you that. It doesn't get easier, you get stronger, and again, it's the routine that lays the foundation for that strength. Before we move to label and diagnose ourselves, how about we at least attempt to take responsibility for ourselves first? Why not give ourselves the best chance possible to take on the challenges of life? As Peterson puts it, why not treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping.